sometimes. But that's not all we have for you. Let's now take a look at what you are saying on social media. And Jeffrey joins me to walk through those comments. Yeah, was he smiling through that victory by France, yeah. especially Portugal? But another victory is for Trump. Right. And the Trump base and supporters, I'm sure they are super excited. Mm. Yes. Of course, for the Republican Party, there's no doubt that Trump is the de facto uh, nominee or candidate. <laughs> but there is a bit of a rallying around uh, Biden, given the outcome of that um, the debate. debate. Yeah. Uh, his cognitive abilities and his ability to be able to carry through with all of the But he's ready. And he, the party he, says they're not even swapping him. Yes. Yeah, it's, 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 then the very next day, he went on kicking and he acknowledged the fact that, look, I know I'm not a young man. So. Let's see how that plays out. Some analysts are saying that on two sides, well, it's more like what decision do they have to make? Yeah. It's a really difficult situation. One is old and they say it's aged. The other one has credibility problems and all of that. So what because some say check. is they're, they're stuck between the devil and the deep blue sea. Some have <laughs> described it as that because, I mean, those are the options they have and they're thinking, okay, we have a much older president and we have another president. But let's take a look at uh, the trends uh, this exactly. morning. We're starting off, Jeffrey. Yes, uh, the unmanned aerial uh, vehicle reportedly crashed in Kaduna. But the story, initial story was that an hel helicopter crashed. But it wasn't an helicopter. It was an unmanned aerial, aerial vehicle, according to the uh, Air Force. So uh, Alofona Chinonso says, uh, NAF helicopters have been crashing. Not so we've corrected that impression, but the Senate didn't see it as a national emergency, rather, they want to improve the uh, presidential airline airplane fleet. What a country! Well, so, the Senate has come out to say, Well, they, they're not actively considering it, but if it were to come before them, they will, will consider it. So, yeah, just to make that point, so take a look at this one from Aminu Ali who's saying the frequent air crashes experienced by the military. Um, jets, helicopters, then you can put um, UAVs as well, depict how the sector is and uh, says this is coming just a few days after unearthing a scandal, uh, this user says. Well, the military has even come out and said, well, it wasn't shut down. They don't suspect any foul play uh, yeah. in this one. So I just All right. put that out. Mansa Zakari says, crashes happen due to human error or lack of proper maintenance. Uh, a lot of NAV, uh, maybe hellos, are old and outdated. Yet again, it wasn't a helicopter. And it points to just a, an obvious vacuum. So when that story uh, broke very early in the morning, I must say, Jeffrey, mm. a lot of people expected the Air Force to come out with yeah. the true picture because residents in that area thought, oh, another helicopter crashed. And they, they went to town with that, you know, reported. So it's important to fill the vacuum on time yes. before things like this spread. But let's move on from that and talk about the, well, the infrastructure structure part of things and it's the fact that the federal government has terminated a Bajana Benin road contract with three firms and this first user has I am says in all of this what about the funds that was allocated to these companies initially for the project will it be refunded as uh, so they were cancelled or what well they are processed to these things Bala has says he should go on to he should go on go one step further and blacklist the contractors and bar them from bidding for all government projects mm. and a lot of people who apply this route will tell you what their experience mm. has been. And that's why this user, Oseni Mamudu, says, uh, good, because we in Edo State are going through a bad time now because of bad road in our chief. So that was the right move by the government, by the statement we're seeing from yeah. the people. Let's move on now to the art interception of those uh, cash of arms. Uh, figures are flying around. Is it 13 or 14 billion? Or all of that but the most important thing is that those arms are illegal they were legally imported into nigeria and these are your reaction iaka gospel says let's know those involved in this shipment it's not enough to cut branches while the roots are allowed to keep penetrating deep into the ground mm. uh, badman underscore Oge reiterates that point small uh well direct says who is the consignee and consigner of the bill of laden used in transporting these ammunitions which shipment agent shipped it. So right. those are the questions being yeah. asked. Tariq Abdulaziz says, this is not the first time we've seen this, uh, things like this. After two days, this news will die. We should be asking questions. Let the NCS, Nigerian Customs Service, I guess, tell us, oh, was, there, was this container supposed destination, the name of the imported cargo and company that cleared this container? And that question is really consistent with users. Uh, Olua underscore Mayowa again says, who are the people doing this? So it's a consistent question people are asking. What do they stand to gain from insecurity in the country? Well, it's important to note that uh, behind every chaos you see 
is a business enterprise. Exactly. Okay. So when you look at those mm. incidents, look closely, then you see someone is gaining from it. So it's it's violence to yeah. some people, it's business to some to others. others, sadly. Well, sometimes we call it coordinated chaos. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Olusha Bank says, who owns the three containers is something Nigerians are interested in knowing. The containers origin and final destination from the Nigerian seaport. Everybody has to be questioned, including the customs themselves. Yeah. Would, particularly, this has not happened before, and we've seen the hands of some corrupt yes. officials in that one. Uh, Debo Deboy uh, asks, or oh, well, is making a request, says, please give it to the Nigerian military. This will help a lot. And says, uh, don't sell it to buy it back. Well, so a lot of them are pump action pump rifles, action. right? Uh, I don't know if they are semi automatics or even automatics. Imagine you're facing a higher firepower mm. and you're stuck with a pump action. Mm. So I don't know uh, what will be done so to Maybe they'll give it to Amotekun. To Amotekun, right? Because the, the Agency for Small and Light Weapons <laughs> yeah. uh, is taking this over. But yes, right. vital point what will be done to these things? And Wilson says, who owns the consignment? What happens now that it has been reported? Kaido, okay, you have next one. Jeffrey, is literally the same thing. Yes, everybody's, everybody's asking. asking. So, uh, maybe we can Kalita move on to the next. asking, Crow Bender also asking. Uh, but let's move on to something playing out in Lagos State now. And you, you remember that sad incident involving a uh, Bamishe young girl uh, who went on a bus in Lagos. So we understand that the Lagos State government is to install cameras on all regulated public transport vehicles in the state. And, uh, well, Mr. or rather M. Pyre Divine, that's the user's name, sometimes ex-user names can mm -hmm. actually confuse you, says this is actually a good move. If the cameras and vehicles can be properly maintained, there should be cameras on the vehicles too uh, that can show what's happening around them. Great for public safety and accountability. I think what Lagos is trying to do should be replicated everywhere in the country. That's the least that can happen. I don't know why cameras an installation is such a big deal. It shouldn't even be a conversation, right? It should be basic, just but like anything. We know that majority of the yeah. public vehicles are not as regulated. They are rickety. I mean, you can well, yeah, I'm talking about to like all these BRTs and all of that. Right, in other states. Mm -hmm. That's if those states have it. That if they have it. John Chris says, that will be a good development in curbing out insecurities and orders in the state, which other states will emulate. Uh, they have the next one. Yeah, Omega oh 01 says first subject them to roadworthiness test. You see right on the mark there. <laughs> Which they will not pass. Again, according these, to VIS. <laughs> these ones are not uh, public regulated, or rather, they're not regulated by government, but they should be actually. So, are you saying the downfalls will also have cameras? Or this is just for BRT? For the records, downfalls will not pass those tests. To the, VIS, the VIS guy said it here. So, he said, if, have you ever gone to those uh, testing points yeah. where you, you want to them? review your life? Do you see them? No. Because I said, why don't, why don't we have them? They said, because they will never pass. So, it begs the question, <laughs> why are they then on our roads? A lot of them are not even fit for animals, talk more human beings. So, mm -hmm. it's a deeper conversation we need to have. So, there you go with that user uh, saying that uh, it will be a good development, curb insecurity and the rest. So, okay, I think uh, the last one here, uh, Eriko Rudi 370 says, this will amount to nothing but waste of public fund. Before venturing into something that would uh, will be that will be dead on arrival, they should first do a check on the condition of Lagos State operated shuttle buses, mm. which was fitted with some facilities to enhance the commuting of passengers. So your voices are quite important. It's a democracy. So put it out there and would we'll help you to of course make it heard and that's what we're doing hashtag ctv morning brief or you can just do it on whatsapp all through the show mm. we are here to receive your comments so this is what we'll do we'll take a brief moment and when we return we'll begin with that executive order by president bola tinabu uh, removing excise duties vat on importation of pharmaceutical imputes what does this mean what will this translate to? How will this help the pharmaceutical industries and particularly you who has to purchase a medication in the pharmacy? That's in a moment we have the Minister of State for Health right here with us. So stay with us.